Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek Cupboard, I'm Penge and welcome back to Project Hospital where the Traumatology Department is finally up and running and there it is with its lovely soothing mint green colour scheme. So we have the clinic -y bit over here and then we have the hospitalisation bit over here and it's working quite well. We have patients in already, there they are, so it's looking quite good. However, there is a little teeny tiny bit of a problem that we do need to sort out quite urgently. In my excitement last time to get everything done, I sort of forgot to build an operating lounge for traumatology. So we have patients who need operations and we have staff who can perform those operations but we have absolutely nowhere at all for those operations to take place which is a little bit of an oversight I will admit so I think we need to look at that quite urgently indeed and I think our best bet is to increase the size of that room there so make that room come all the way down to here so we will lose that corridor and now that's a bit sad because I do like a nice corridor but I think we can live without that one there. So bring that down to here, so make that room just a tiny bit bigger, and then split it down the middle kind of that way. So have one bit over here for traumatology, and then have another operating lounge there for orthopedics. I think that will be our best bet. I think that's what we have to do. So I think... Right now, there's somebody already undergoing an operation. Or are they being moved? Actually, they might be being moved. Hang on a second. Hang on. If they're being moved out of here, can we... Hang on a second. Can we move that now? Right, okay. As soon as that trolley leaves, as soon as that trolley leaves this room, then uh, yes, we can get on with this. Hang on a minute. Hang on. Let's get time ticking on, sure. So you clear off out of here. So leave that room and you as well. So there you go. Out the door, please. Take your time. Right. Okay, that's good. And now we can move it around because there's nobody assigned to that operating table thing there because it's not green. So now we can move things around. That's perfect. That's wonderful timing. Okay, let's get this sorted. So we do have $33,720. So I think we can afford to get it all set up. It is expensive the operating lounges because they need all sorts of fancy kit but I think we have to do this so job number one is to get the wall set up we don't need to build foundation which is quite nice so we are going to lose our lovely corridor farewell corridor so I think how are we going to do this so in terms of the colors of the wall so I think down here is going to have to be green so we're going to have, yeah, the uh, the traumatology operating bit over here and then orthopedics over here. So let's get that sorted. So let's go to here and go to walls and get ourselves that wall just there and bring that all the way along like that. That's very good. And then swivelly swivel that round. And then we shall grab that wall just there. Although they're the wrong... Yeah, we had a bit of a contentious colour thing there, didn't we? So hang on. So that can go up like that i think that wall there needs to be green to show that it is part of of traumatology hang on hang on we can do that we can make that work so grab that bring that across to there look so those rooms you know there on that green wall they're part of traumatology and then that side of the corridor that is orthopedics okay there we go that's absolutely fine and then we can get rid of that wall just there which is very good so cheerio and then hang on what are the walls like in here what do they look like right they're just kind of plain walls so we don't need to worry about putting different colors on them or whatever unless we'd like to but i don't think we should i think we keep it nice and simple oh hang on no i'm saying that but look we could have white tiles and colored wall that could be quite nice couldn't it? that would really really reinforce the point that it's two different sort of departments sharing the same space, if you like. That might be quite good. That might be a good kind of visual reminder. So um, hang on a second, hang on. Job number one, though, actually, floor. Let's get the floor done first, shall we? Because that is nice and simple. So here we go. Boop like that with the floor sorted. And then I think we need to go to... Uh, hang on a minute, orthopedics. And we need to unzone this. This might make things go a little bit wibbly for a while, but there we go. So unzone that, and then we want to go to, where is it? Operating room, operating lounge, of course. Oh, hang on. What's their minimum size? Eight by six. Hang on, how long is this bit here? It's 12. Oh, it's perfect. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. Right, okay, so six by 10 for that bit there. So that is the orthopedics operating lounge. 
And then we need to go over here to Traumatology and have a Traumatology Operating Lounge. Okay, there we go. Wonderful stuff. And then that corridor can go up to there. So hang on a minute. Let's get things done properly. Let's sort things out. Um, and then, of course, we need to change the floor over here. Very important. So grab the green floor, drag that up to there. Okie dokie. Right, that's all sorted. So now I've got this half here is for orthopedics. This half here is for traumatology. Now we just need to kind of, you know, rejig everything to make it all fit. So let's go to here. We need to do the walls as well. Let's let's get everything in first, shall we? So what do we need to make this work? So if we click into here, right, we need quite a lot of things. So let's do this side first, look. Let's do this side. Oh, the stretch has been left behind. There's like a, a ghost of a stretcher because it's being taken somewhere else. Um, okay, well, there's a lot. There's a lot of blood in there. <laughs> hang on, hang on. Do, do we need to be concerned by the huge volume of blood that's on the floor over in the high dependency ward in orthopedics? Who's been bleeding profusely? Um, I don't think anybody is in, like, no, they're not rushing over to somebody to do you know, CPR or keep them alive or whatever. So I assume it was just a particularly, oh no, is it you? Um, hang on, where are you going? Hang on, there's a person there um, transported to treatment. Ah, James Garcia. You might have to wait for a second because it's yeah, it's a little bit of a mess around here at the moment. Hang on, we're, we're better get it sorted. Okay, so over here, look, let's move. Let's do this one here. Let's sort out this room here. So uh, I think, can we hide all the things around the place? There we go, like that. So hide the windows and such. So they need to have an operating table. So we'll put that kind of in the middle look, because that kind of makes sense. So pop that in the middle, and then we need the anesthesia workstation. So that has to go there. And what else do we need with that? The instruments table. Um, okay, hang on, hang on. Rotate it round. What are we missing? We must be missing something. Um, hang on, didn't we just move that? Where does that go? Uh, that goes, ah, that goes there. Okay, that's fine. Then we've got whatever that is. Does that go there? I'm not entirely sure. We still need the instruments table and the digital imaging. Um, I mean, where, hang on, where's the instruments table from the existing setup? Where is that? I don't know where that is. I thought we just put something over here, didn't we? Okay, I don't know where that's gone. Right, move everything out of the way. It's all very busy in here. It's quite cluttered. So let's just shifty everything out of the way for now. Just move all these bits and bobs. Um, and a few people in the comments a little while ago now, admittedly, did say that um, normally the bit where the doctors or surgeons, whatever, um, they go and wash their hands is normally a little bit separated to the actual main bit itself. So they'll have a little bit where they go and wash their hands and then they'll go into the kind of operating sort of lounge proper. So maybe we should do that. Maybe we should have some sort of like glass partition or something. If we move these... Um, move the doors around a bit, that might make it look a little bit nicer. So hang on, just complete, completely empty this room. Just get rid of everything because it's just getting, it's, it's too busy. It's really busy and really complicated to figure out what needs to go where. So there we go. The only thing left is that kind of ghost trolley that we can't really do anything with right now, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, right. So now that's all clear. Do you know what? I'm all over the place, but let's go and do the wall, shall we? So let's have that wall type for this over here. So we know that this bit, there you go, that, that, I quite like that. That's okay, that is for traumatology. Um, hang on, uh, is that for trauma? I'm confused as to which way is what now. <laughs> Where are we? Hang on a minute, I need to go back to this view again. Um, no, take that down, like that. So that wall, and rotate it round. So we're looking at the outside, yeah. So that bit there, and then rotate it round and then halfway along like that. Okay, so that's like that. And then we want to do exactly the same thing, but with the peach color. So hang on, so do that and then pick that one. So then that can go along like that. Need one more like so, and then draw that on like that, which does you know, fill in those blank bits as well, which is quite nice. And that bit across like that. Okay. So that's pretty good, but then do we need to move the doors? 
I do want to move the doors over a little bit. So we have more room over here for the operating bit itself. And that can be where all the sinks and such like are. So maybe, maybe we do need to move those doors over as well. Hang on a second. Um, they are these types of doors. Yeah, you can't move the doors, can you? It's a little bit of a bother. Okay, right. Remove the doors. Remove the doors. The walls are fine. That's good. Then we shall go like that. And we'll put them right on the edge. Like so. To give us the most space in the room itself. So there we go. That's absolutely fine. Um, and then I think... Let's do, I mean, let's do orthopedics first, because that was there first, wasn't it? So let's get that done now. So I think, yeah, can we get like a tall glass wall type thing in? That might be quite nice. Or is it going to be, yeah, is it windows? Have we got to do it with windows? So like tall windows. So over here we can have the sinks and things. I think we need the visibility back on now for all the windows and things. There we go. So if we put that, say, going along there have a little kind of glass bit sticking through here. That might be quite good. Although, is there anything better in here? I don't think there is. So yeah, let's go for that. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, no, there isn't. So I think, yeah, we need to get any old wall in and then fill it with windows effectively because that turns it into a window, doesn't it? So if we just go, um, okay, like that, look. So let's have a bit like that. So three there and two there and then go to here and just turn it into windows because it's got it's got to go on a wall to turn it into a big window which is a bit weird but there we go i quite like that so they can wash their hands over here and then go into here and do the operation stuff okay so what do they need exactly so three scrub shells three scrubbing sinks okay so they can go into here i quite like this so the three shelves let's put them across this end here so you can go and pick up your scrubs and that's fine. Right, so they can go there. And then the sinks could go along here because they're backing onto a wall. And I just moved a thing I didn't want to move. There we go. So like that and like that. So you get your scrubs, you go and wash your hands. That's good. Right, then let's get the main stuff in over here. So let's pop that in like uh, that because that gives us plenty of room to have other things. So we've got that. Now we need the anesthesia workstation. What's this? Hang on. Pop that there. Is that what that was? I'm not entirely sure what that was, but okay. Then we need the digital imaging, I think. So does that go there? No. I think I put it in the wrong place. Hang on a minute. There's an arrow pointing where it should. Ah, there we go. Like that. Right. Digital imaging. We need a stool. Okay. Pop a stool in. Then we need surgery instruments and the instrument table. I don't think we have an instrument table. Where is the instrument table? I'm not entirely convinced that we have such a thing. Um, I mean, yeah, does it... Is it that? It's not that, is it? Um, no. Where is that? Did I accidentally sell it or something daft? I can't see where that would be. Um, okay, show up. Let's put one in. Instrument table. There we go. Um, pop that in like that, and then surgery instruments will go onto that table. Okay, so that is the whole kind of, you know, table bit set up. And then we just need to get all of this other stuff in. So we need to get some equipment cabinet type things. We'll put that into that corner sort of end over there. Um, we do all these bits and bobs as well. So we'd need, um, what is that? A warming cabinet and all that kind of stuff. Have I got these the right way round, by the way? Hang on. They all need the same thing. Okay, right. Operating lounges all need the same stuff. That's fine. Ah, we've got a suction machine. That's required. Let's put that over there. That's fine. And then we've got a little oxygen tank thing. That could go next to it. There we go. Just for colour, I think that is. Um, we've got these over here. So let's put that there. Let's move that down a bit. Then we want that in like that. Pop that there, say. Then we've got, what is that? Ah, that's a warming cabinet. Okay, I don't really know what you need one of those for, except warming things, I know. But what exactly are you warming? I'm not entirely sure. So there we go. And then we need the stretchers, which is fine. So these can have, yeah, let's have sort of, it's not really an orange to go for orthopedics, but let's go for, yeah, that colour there will do. So let's pop the stretcher into that corner there. And I think we only need the one because you can only have one person undergoing an operation at any one time. So I think 
that room is now up and running, which is good. So now we need to kind of partition it off a little bit. I mean, do we want to have a nice glass wall between the two? So they can maybe yeah, sort of wave at each other through the walls and stuff. That might be quite nice. That might be quite fun. So the surgeons can sort of, you know, they can, if it's a bit quiet in the operation, if somebody else is doing some work and the people looking at each other, they can have a nice game of charades or something. That might be quite fun. So hang on. It says grab any old wall like that. Just going to throw that in. And of course over there as well. So hang on. So coming from the door is the three. So one, two, three, and then a gap and then two. Okay. And then go to here and then just replace it all with just big, tall glass kind of panels. I quite like that. Although, do we want, is it, is that better? Um, that might be a little bit better for this bit here. There we go. I quite like that. That looks okay. And then we'll put a proper wall over there, I think. That little bit over there can be sort of you know, more sort of enclosed. And this bit here can be a little bit more sort of glassy. Although actually, I don't know if I like those bits in there. No, we're going for the proper big tall glass things. There we go. Like that. Uh, and then, yeah, we will sort out a proper wall over there. So hang on a second. So. Um, Grab that, pop that in, swivel it round, drop uh, that wall, and put that there. There we go. Right, so one operating lounge up and running and looking pretty good. I think possibly could we have another couple of equipment cabinets just to make it feel a bit more complete. So we could put one of those in there, maybe as well just for the sake of it, and this isn't required in here, but let's put a scrubs thing in there as well. And then we have got, have we got any more room? We've possibly got a little bit of room at the back, right there. Is there anything we'd like to have just there? Well, hang on, is there a defibrillator anywhere? Do we need one of those? That seems like an important thing to have, I would say. I would have thought a defibrillator would be quite key. Um, it can't be played, I can't go on the glass walls. Okay, that's fine. Um, I mean, is there anything else we'd want? Uh, the Oh, the bins. The bins. The bins will have to go over here, I think. The bins can go into here. I mean, do we put in, I don't know, some glassware? Do we need glassware? I don't think we need glassware. I think we can cope without glassware. Um, let's just put that on the wall just there. And then, of course, yeah, the bins have to come in. So hang on, there was another red bin as well. There it is. And, of course, the plant. We need to have the plant. Um, plant... Can the plant go in this room anywhere? It can go there. It can go, oh, it could go against this wall. Let's put it there. There we go, look, because you have to have a plant in all of our rooms because it is the law. And then we need to do that again, but over here for the new operating lounge. Um, okay, right, so click over here. We'll try and replicate what we've got. It shouldn't take too long to get the bulk of it in. It should be sort of okay. So here we go. Let's just go and place all these items in and get everything up and running. What money have we got? 25 grand. Oh, the sinks are quite expensive then. Wow. They're what? $900 for a sink. Grief. Okay. <laughs> I didn't think they were quite as costly as that, but there we go. You live and learn. Um, right. Yeah. Let's go and get all this set up if we can afford it. Now I'm a little bit doubtful as to whether we can afford all this stuff or not. But okay, right, let's try and get everything in. Okay, there we go. It did take quite a bit of money. We're down to what, about nine and a half thousand dollars now. But our second operating lounge is now fully equipped and is ready to start accepting patients, which is all very good indeed. And I have tried to make this one as green as possible because of course the color scheme over here in Traumatology is our lovely shade of green. So where objects could be colored green, I have made sure that they are green, like a green stool over there. And the edges around the operating table lights are green and the handles on that screen are green. There's a little kind of, what is that thing? The suction machine, I think, at the back, that's got green on it as well. So I've tried to make that as green as possible. And I picked a very green plant. I do quite like that. And then over here, I did go and change the colours a bit to make sure that everything was as orangey as it could be. Although orange is less common with the colours that you can choose for your objects. Green is relatively common. You don't get much choice for orange. So for example, over there, the suction machine and that kind of oxygen tank thing, they're red rather than orange, but it's as close as we've got. The stool is red rather than orange, but yeah, that's what we've got to deal with. So there we go. They're both up and running. So I think now what happens if we go to here and we unpause time? Is everything gonna kind of kick back into life? Hang on, right. 
It's that person there. Oh, hang on. You're the one who's bleeding everywhere. Where are you going? You're going to treatment. Okay, hang on. What is happening to you? Um, are you going for an x-ray? Are you going for an x-ray? Emergency? Okay, hang on. Where are you going? I'm a little bit confused as to where they're taking you now. Because I thought either you'd be going for an x-ray or you would be going... I mean, you are bleeding everywhere. Or you'd be going... Oh, okay. You're going into here for just a little bit of treatment, are you? Okay. <laughs> I mean, yeah, can we stop the bleeding? Could we possibly stop the blood? That'd be quite nice. Um, bed required for examination. Interview is occupied or your staff has been busy for a long time. Okay, hang on. Whereabouts are you? Bed required for, emer for treatment. Emergency care is occupied. I think what's happened is me moving that round has made things very complicated. And the game is now trying to readjust over here to go, hang on a minute, hang on. Yeah, okay, I get it. There's a new thing over here now. I think it's got a little bit kind of fussy. Yeah, bed required for treatment is occupied. Oh, your staff has been busy for a long time. So you're requiring treatment for, yeah, a broken arm, a shoulder dislocation. Okay, um, so hang on. So what is the problem? This is all valid now. It's all valid. Bed required for treatment EMS is occupied. Oh, just, what's EMS? Please just you use words that I know what it means. What's EMS? Emergency something something. Where are you, Christopher Adams, in the world? You're over here. You're waiting for a free treatment room. Um, I mean, is it that one there? Because there's already somebody in that treatment room being treated. You'll have to wait your turn, everybody. People whinging. There's people ill around here. Please let us treat them as best we can. Thank you very much. Yes, yeah, so you're being looked at over here. So yeah, you've got all sorts going on. Dizziness, exposed bone, your legs all hanging off. It's all it's all very unpleasant. Hence all the blood. Have we got anybody cleaning that up, by the way? Um, oh no, somebody's collapsing. Hang on a minute. Who's collapsed? Let's <laughs> go find where you are. Um, okay, they're collapsing. Um, oh, but they've collapsed in bed. I mean, they've not fallen down. Um, bed required for treatment. Proliferation therapy. What's that? What does that need? Um, waiting for a free treatment room. Okay, hang on, hang on. What is a treatment room? Is that a thing which we now need more of? Hang on a second. <laughs> What's a treatment room? Um, okay, go into there. So they are... Um, are they... They're none of those. It's none of those at all. Hang on. What's a treatment room? Orthopedics offices, wherever. Is it that? Is it the diagnostic unit? It could possibly be this, because somebody did just go into that. I don't know. I don't know what the problem is. People are nagging at me. I'm not entirely sure what the issue is. But hang on. How is how is the poorly person over here? There you go. Right. Are you being stabilised? Hopefully you are. You're hospitalised and collapsing. Do you have a bed in intensive care to go into? Yes, you do. Uh, bed required for treatment. Replantation. What does that mean? Scheduled waiting for a free treatment room. Surgical reattachment of a body part, finger or foot. I think, I think it's not happy that we've moved this around. I think it's gone a little bit kind of wibbly. Have I reassigned it correctly? So, yes, it's a valid operating room slash lounge. It's valid, but that should show who's coming in. But I don't think anybody's coming in. Um, okay. I've clearly broken this in some fashion by introducing a slightly different lounge layout. Um, okay, hang on. And what about over there? Traumatologist one is also up and running. So yeah, it's valid because it's got a one on it and it's not got red on it or anything. So it is a valid room, as is that one there, because it's got all the required things. I think that's the problem. That's the issue. It's saying, whoa, hang on a minute. I, this room isn't valid anymore, but I'm not entirely sure why they can't go into it. Why can't they use that room? Hang on. Nothing is flashing on and off down here to indicate that it's broken. We've got the staff. We've got everything kind of going as it should do. Um, hang on a minute. Let's make sure that she's okay. So she's going to make her way over to intensive care for a bit because she collapsed. Okay, there we go. It's a good job we invested in a third bed. There we go. Wonderful. Nobody else collapsed, please, <laughs> because these beds are really expensive. Um, okay. So are we getting operations happening in here? I mean, maybe not overnight, possibly, because we did see that wasn't working before. And um, we'll have a look at that in a bit. Um, could somebody possibly clean up the blood? Do they not? They have a cleaner, don't they? They have a janitor. 
Um, yeah, the janitor's over in there somewhere. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Do they have a nighttime janitor over in orthopedics? Oh, no, they don't. Orthopedics do not have a nighttime janitor. I suspect maybe we need to employ one because there's quite a lot of blood all over the place. Hang on, let's go and get a new person. And of course, this does mean we can have a lovely spin on the wheel of names. Um, okay, let's have a quick look. Um, you could be quite good. 61 and 64. See, Charles Walker lives far away, so we can often be late. Um, he is a bit better, but he is more expensive and he could be late. Um, you don't take free time breaks, which is okay. Let's not have you, because your skills aren't that good. And your skills, in fact, do you know what? You're okay. You're pretty good. You have no traits at all. You're just an entirely average person, but 72% efficiency, 62% dexterity, and you're a master janitor for 162 of the monies. Yeah, we shall have you. Absolutely. Please come in and do some tidying of the blood because it's a bit of a mess. Um, however, what was your name? Fraser Hall. Um, no, you're not going to stay like that because now you have to kind of you know, apply the hospital's policy of changing your name the moment you arrive. So let's go and give the Wheel of Names a spin and see who you become. Henceforth, they shall be known as Mad Mad, which is very exciting. So there we go, Mad Mad. You can go do some cleaning, please. Let's make sure that you do actually get on with it. So, yep, you pop out there. And yeah, you're immediately going into here to clean up the vast quantities of blood because there is quite a lot of blood lying around the place and it's not very pleasant, but okay, right. Do you know what we need to do? We need to go straight on until the morning. I imagine we might get a few more nagging messages, but Mad Mad there is doing a very good job of tidying up and Dusty River's finished doing their training. That's very exciting. Hang on, Dusty River. Um, I should possibly have, wait, you'll be in the training room, won't you? Should possibly have told you to go and do some more training. Um, do you know what, Dusty River? Go and do some more general medicine training. Who'd have thought that would be your thing to do next? Another $800 going on that. Um, right, okay. Fling time on until the morning. Let's get time speeding on very quickly indeed. And then we'll see what happens with our operating lounges. There's no free bed for the required hospitalization. <laughs> I can't... We've, I think we might have room for one more... Ooh. Oh, I don't know. I don't think we have got room for one more bed unless we just get rid of those doors at the end. But they are really convenient. And we can have one door. We could just have one door, possibly. Um, okay, right. Hang on. Wait there. Wait there, whoever it was. We're going to rejig this room a bit more because it's getting a bit silly, isn't it? But hang on a second. Hang on. What have we got? About $9,000. We haven't got that much money. Um, okay, right. Hang on a sec. So grab that, put that there. So that's fine. But now, of course, there's a little bit of a problem with the whole sort of doors being blocked by a little bedside table. So then we have to go to there and we'll get rid of those doors. And then we just have a door with an oval window with that kind of thing. Pop that in like that. Okay, right. That is the most amount of beds we can fit into that room. We cannot put any more beds into orthopedics high dependency. It's just too completely, utterly rammed. So, okay, move time on. Um, hang on, hang on. The, uh, the operating lounge lights are on. This is good. Okay, treatment is not available. Uh, they're getting ready to leave. Why is it not available? Please tell me why. What is the problem directly? Hospitalization required for the treatment is not available. Check free beds. Um, I mean, are they basically saying that there's not enough? There's a queue. There's, I mean, I don't know who's coming here next, but you'll have to leave if you're having a bit of a problem. But you, you can wait a while and you can be seen. But OK, fine. Right. Where are we going with that trolley? That trolley is just going down here to pick somebody up. Brooke Forster has... Oh, no. <laughs> Brooke Forster has collapsed. Whereabouts are you, Brooke Forster? Um, oh, she's already in one of the intensive care beds. Oh, okay. Do you know what? It's not so bad. It's not so bad. There you go. You're already sorted. Uh, Jennifer Lee is leaving. Do you know what, Jennifer Lee? It's fine. It's fine. You go elsewhere for your hospital treatment. It is okay. We can cope with you leaving and your impatient ways. Brooke Forster is in a very bad way. <laughs> She's got ballistic wounds, septic shock. Uh, yeah. Are we going to lose our first patient? Oh, we are. <gasps> Patient's condition was critical, and despite your doctor's best efforts, they couldn't be saved. Would a more efficient hospital handle this case better? Probably. Uh, do you know what? Actually, 
Yes, <laughs> yes, they would, um, because we are neither. We're not efficient. It's it's a right old shambles around here, but it's fine. Um, okay, so her ballistic wound in her leg caused her to die. Oh, that's really sad. I'm sorry, Brooke Foster. I'm very sorry, Brooke Foster. Um, there we go. She is. She has passed away. That's really sad, and she's kind of vanished. Don't quite know what happened with that. Now I know. Oh, hang on. Did they go into an ambulance and get taken away or something? Um, I know that, um, yes, you can have... Where is it? Is that one there? You can have pathology. So you can then deal with, you know, sort of bodies and such like, if that is what you want to do. And I have it on good authority from uh, Dr. Dave, Dr. Wee Hours, that um, it does make some good money. But, of course, we will have to get it all set up and running, so it might take a while. Right, hang on. Speed time on. Speed time on. Let's get this sorted. Um, okay, hang on a second. You're not going in either. You're going to go home. Okay, right. We can't... If you're not being treated, you're not being treated. It's fine. Just speed time on. Get to the money. Yeah, okay, bye, bye, whatever your name was. I'm not even bothered anymore. If they're leaving, they're leaving. Right. The operating lounges have been cleaned of blood, which is good. And I think they're going to... They've grabbed a stretcher. So what? But the operating lounges, they're not doing anything. Why are the operating lounge is not functioning? They took a stretcher from the operating lounge and took it somewhere else. Why is it saying that the surgery isn't available? What is happening? Why is it not available? Hospitalization required for the treatment is not available. It is. We have we have allowed with it's there. It's right here. No free bed in HD hospital. Do you know what? You have to wait. You have to wait your turn. This is getting a little bit daft, isn't it? Um I don't quite know. Nurses are complaining there's not enough stretchers for all the patients that need transport or orthopedic. Okay, okay. We could possibly sort that out a bit. The nurses are running that. We just made a massive pile of money from all the people here that hopefully are then going to go and get treated today. Because if they don't, I'm not quite sure what to do with this room. As far as I can see, it is absolutely up and running as it should be. But I don't know why they're not using it. I don't fully understand. It just doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I'm very confused, game. Please advise. So, uh, okay. A load of people have paid us some money for staying overnight. That's good. We now need to go and get some more stretchers. So, orthopedics. This bit here needs some more stretchers. So, okay. We can do that. We can provide that. So, if we just sort of move that over a bit and that over a bit, we could fit another two in here. It won't be pretty. Won't look very good, but it should suffice. So hang on a minute. Let's get some stretchers. Let's have them. I mean, that colour's about as near as we can get to the sort of orangey colour, isn't it? So there we go. Two more. Hopefully that will help a bit. And then can we please go in and use this room? Right, somebody is running in. Oh, they're grabbing that stretcher. You've got that stretch. It stretches everywhere. Just stretcher races happening all over the place. <laughs> um. Right, okay. Um, patient coming treated is leaving. This is not going to do wonders for our for our reputations. However, they are finally going into here. Look, they're getting ready to receive a patient, which is good. Um, who is it? I don't know. But finally, somebody is actually coming into it. All the doctors are in. This is wonderful. Right. Okay. And look at that. There we go. I, I, yeah, there is a long way for treatment. I do apologize, but that is the way of things. Okay. So we've got you in over here for a pulmonary laceration. Uh, oh, you're in from intensive care. Oh, and you're in for... Oh, hang on a minute. Hang on. <laughs> this is because they're shared rooms. I think literally anybody is using the operating lounges to do any kind of treatment. So over here is the intensive care patient. And over there is an orthopedics person. So... I mean, do you guys need an operation? I imagine you might need one. You need lower limb trauma surgery. It's scheduled. Oh, okay. Oh, there we go. So, right. So, because it's an intensive care person, they've kind of sort of, you know, barged in and took this, this uh, operating bed thing. Okay, that's fine. How is it going to go? Is it looking good? Also, what's our current goals? Treat 90 patients per day. We have lost four of them, of course, so far, but we get 98 people coming in. And it's, what, half nine in the morning, and we've treated 34 people, which is pretty good. So hopefully, fingers crossed, we could get to that 90. 
And then that gives us a person, doesn't it? Yeah, the next intern. And then there is a goal after that. And I'm imagining the goal after that is going to be do something amazing and get a huge pile of cash. But we shall wait and see. Right. Okay, so they're now both dealt with, look. So they've both been handled, so away you go on your stretcher. That person is just in that room on their own. Okay, right. They've gone away on the stretcher. Now more people are coming in, more operations underway. This is wonderful. Okay, so you are now... Which one are you? So you are... You're from Traumatology, and you're in the designated Traumatology Operating Lounge. Although we can share them, because you know, that's nice. Sharing is caring. Right. Okay. So now, can we get some more orthopedics people into this one to work our way through here? Yes, we can. Right. Okay. So you, your orthopedic, you're Jennifer Walker. You're here for a complicated fracture of the humerus. Okay. Right. Hopefully, that can now sort itself out. That was a little bit of a mess. Oh, no. <laughs> right. Um, hang on a minute. Deep... <laughs> This is this is a bit silly. Um, according to performed examinations, it's not possible for the patient to have the selected diagnosis. So we've diagnosed her as having a deep wound on her feet, whereas actually the correct diagnosis was having a deep wound on her leg. Um, who saw? Oh, <laughs> well, of course, the doctor that saw her and made that fairly fundamental error was, of course, pench cupboard. I mean, I don't know how you got that wrong. I don't know, are you actually a real doctor? Where did you get your certificate from for medicine, Penge Cupboard? Where did you practice? Was it in the cupboard? Um, because, I mean, deep wound on feet, deep wound on leg, it's the final word there, isn't it? That's the kind of determining factor. Where was the wound? If the wound was on her leg, then it's clearly not a deep wound on her feet, is it, Dr. Penge? <laughs> <laughs> with your fraudulent medical qualifications. Um, yeah, we'll go for, we'll get rid of that and have deep wound on leg, please. And Dr. Penge, go back to leg school. Go back to limb school, please. Oh, dear. Uh, sorry, Brooke Martin. That's that's very embarrassing. I do apologise. <laughs> um, X-ray lower limb is occupied. Yeah, okay, that's fine. We probably need to do that as well at some point. Um, yeah. Uh, Brooke Martin is in here with Dr. Penge. I imagine Dr. Penge is apologising profusely for being a bit of a wally and not being able to identify the difference between a leg and a foot. <laughs> Which would not, if I'm being completely honest, would not instill me with much confidence. If I went to a hospital and my doctor didn't know the difference between my leg and my foot, I would be a little bit concerned by this. But okay, right, she's gone away and she's got various treatment things i think i'm not entirely sure but okay right she's gone away for a bit hopefully hopefully that sorted that out and then dr penge yeah don't do that again dr penge because that was that was a little bit silly wasn't it <laughs> never mind never mind i think she's okay okay we've got two people undergoing surgery we've got you over here so linda hernandez being treated for a leg ballistic wound and then over here we have who have we got susan davis is in for a dislocated knee. Ooh, that's very unpleasant. Right, hang on a second, hang on. What do we have here? David White, complicated diagnosis. Okay, David White, what can we do with this? Right, there are many potentials here. Golfer's elbow, tennis elbow, elbow bursitis, simple fracture of the ulna. Okay, so that's a forearm break. Simple fracture of the radius, that's a forearm break as well. Simple fracture of the humerus, that's the upper arm being broken. I thought maybe you might have been able to work that out, but okay. Um, let's send you for, I mean, an x-ray of your upper limb would make sense, although you might have to wait a little while. Um, yeah, go and do that. Go and sort that out, please, because I think that would help quite a bit, because then you can have an x-ray and see whether your bones are broken on your arms. As simple as that, really, isn't it? So you go and join the x-ray queue. How is that looking? Oh, it's looking horribly, horribly busy. Long wait for transport. Uh, are there enough free nurses to transport the patient? Okay, okay. I hear you loud and clear, game. Do we need to get some more nurses to transport people around? Um. So hang on, where are we? Over here, look. Uh, how many nurses have we got in the daytime? Uh, go back to traumatology. We've already got three in the day. And we haven't really got that much room here to fit any more desks in so we can have more people. Um, what could we do about that? 
What could we possibly do about that? Unless we get rid of some of this equipment over here and put another desk in and just move that somewhere else and hire another daytime nurse. That'd be quite good. That would be quite good. Um, also, a few people in the comments have said that we're not staffing, we've not got the nighttime staff set up properly. So that's why they're not doing operations at night. If we do get that set up, they will carry on working throughout the night, which is possibly something that we could have a look at. But right now, let's sort this out. So we're lacking nurses. So traumatology was definitely lacking a nurse. Um, I imagine possibly over here would also be struggling for nurses. So let's have a look over here. Right, so building mode. Traumatology over here. Oh no. Are we going to have to get rid of our lovely... Uh, sort of desks with things on. I'm not getting rid of the one with the flower on it, obviously. That'd be silly. Um, hang on. Let's move them into here. Oh no, I don't want that one. I want the one at the bottom. There we go. Move that into there for now. Just, yeah, we'll keep it. We'll just move the useful equipment over. Um, we'll move that to there. Can we put a desk under those? That is the question, isn't it? Hang on a second. Can we have an office desk? Which one is it? That colour... Can it go under there? Yes, it can. Okay, right, then can we get a chair? Can we have a green chair, please? Then we need a computer. Computer, there we go. And then we'll have ourselves a little printer, shall we? Um, oh, they don't need a printer necessarily. I want to put something on that. <gasps> a mug. They can have a mug on their desk. Hang on a minute, this is exciting. Where is the mug? And we'll have a green mug. Okay, there we go. Little mug on the desk. Very important. Clearly full of tea. Right, there we go. We can now have an extra nurse here during the daytime. So let's go and get somebody that's yeah, okay. Let's get somebody that's good. So patient care, 48%. And you've got, what are you, $271. Whereas your patient care is 36%. And you're way more expensive. But you do have three hidden secrets. Do you know what? I'm not joking. We'll, we'll actually check. We'll check. Oh, crikey, right. You're a people person. You're a hedonist and you're depressed. But Dana Garcia down here is loyal and a hard worker. In you come, Dana Garcia. But again, of course, hang on a minute. We need to change your name. So over to the Wheel of Names for another spin. And we welcome Andy Anderson. There we go, Andy Anderson. You've joined the nurses over here in traumatology to hopefully try to sort of keep things ticking over a bit. If everyone's getting too busy pushing other patients around, we're going to have less nurses tending to the patients over here in the ward. So hopefully you can kind of balance that out a bit. So let's make sure that you actually come in and settle down. Oh no, you're immediately going to go and do some stuff. Okay, that's fine. You're out and about doing some stuff. That is very good. Okay, right. Oh, hang on. Hang on. They're coming into here. They're washing their hands. Okay, another operation on the way. Danny Yuri from Medical Labs, I think it is doing some cleaning over here in our in our medical lounges. So Danny Yuri doing a grand job of keeping things tidy. Well done, Danny Yuri, <laughs> The secret superstar of our hospital. Well done, you. Um, okay, right, another thing. Oh, I thought this person was coming in, but no. So let's see, can we get more people in? Yeah, so here comes another person. How many do we have in traumatology? There's quite a few. There are quite a few people in traumatology. Why are we not operating on anybody in orthopedics again is it a a nurse's problem so do we need to rejig things around over here and get another nurse in for orthopedics over here hang on a minute there we go right move that down to there move that over to move, move. i don't know why that can't move why can't you move move over there uh, it's blocked by another object is it Oh, that's on the wall. Ah, yes. Okay, yeah. You are you are correct, game. Well done. Um, right, put that there. And then we'll get another desk in here. So I think, are they those? Yeah, so another desk. Then get a lovely, exciting you know, red racing chair, because red goes faster. And then we'll put that there. And then, yeah, these tables don't have anything on them. That's a that's a crying shame. Hang on a second. Hang on. Can we put some stuff on the tables? Disinfectant tools there and there. Keep your hands clean. Uh, we'll have a red mug on that one. And then we'll have some files, just you know, generic files and paperwork on that one. And then a little kind of a little cactus on that one. There we go. That's better. I like that. Feels a bit more sort of you know, alive now. Right, let's get another person over here 
to just kind of help push people around. And as well, if we do get an extra nurse who doesn't have any of the particular skills required to go and help out with operations, that means that they can go and push people about on trolleys and those nurses that do have the qualifications can go and do surgery. So it's more likely that we can get more surgery done if we just have more nurses pushing trolleys about. So here we go. Let's go and get another person over here. Who do we have? Uh, Judy Harris, Kate Baker. These aren't the best people in the world. Down here, look. Linda Allen. Fresh parent and resistance. Um, do you know what? You will do. Rather than re-rolling it for two and a half grand, we'll keep our money and we'll get Linda Allen in. Okay, so welcome, Linda. Uh, but again, yep, here we go. Another spin on the wheel of names. Three in relatively quick succession. Okay, so who is joining us? And it's Arian who is joining us over here in orthopedics. And I have pronounced that correctly because in their comment that they left saying they'd like to be on the wheel of names, they left a little guide as to how to pronounce her name and it's pronounced Arian. So there we go, Arian. Welcome to the team. So let's see if that makes a difference with you guys as well over here. Currently, you're just sort of sitting down. It looks like you're on YouTube. Could you go and do some stuff? But look at that. Maybe her presence alone over here, being around the place, means that these two over here who are qualified nurses to go and do whatever it is they have to do, this stuff, the medical surgery and the anesthetics possibly, but they can now go over here and do this job, which means Arian can go and do some other stuff. So maybe having extra nurses is helping out a bit with getting more operations underway. Joseph King hasn't been seen by a doctor for a long time. Um, okay, I think you might be next up. I think you might possibly be next up because there's not that many people in the queue over here. In fact, I think it might possibly just be you. Um, treatment for patients' diagnosis is not available. Concentrated oxygen. I mean, if we don't have concentrated oxygen, I'm not entirely sure what you expect me to do. Can we put you in intensive care? Um, yeah, do you know what? Oh, is it worth putting you in intensive care? Can we do... Uh, hang on. Where is, where is concentrated oxygen? Is it that? I don't know, hang on. Treatment. So we can't do a treatment. We have got a department set up to deal with this though. Why can't we deal with that? Maybe it's because you can't get into the operating lounge because it's full possibly. Oh, I don't, if you leave, you leave, it's fine. I'm terribly confused. I wish the messages were a little bit clearer. If it could say, this person needs to lie down in an operating lounge bed and there isn't one, that's a bit of a problem, isn't it there, Dr. Penge? And I'd be fine with that, but they're a little bit, I don't know, the messages could do with a, a tiny bit more exploration behind them. Or maybe that's just me. Okay, Richard Moore, bye-bye, bye-bye. Have a fun time wherever it is you go. I'm sure you'll find some treatment somewhere else. <laughs> I don't know what those messages mean. Um, okay, a clinic patient hasn't been seen for a long time. Okay... So you're waiting over, oh, there's a very big queue for x-rays. Okay, we need to look at this at some point as well, because this is not looking good. It takes a while to do this. Um, the only thing is, how are we going to rejig this? Unless, yeah, I know, um, unless we had a wall to here. So yeah, fill that in with wall and then just have, I don't know what this means. I don't know what this means. What do you mean concentrated oxygen? <laughs> What can we do about this? I genuinely don't understand what it means. We haven't got concentrated oxygen. But you're in you're in the traumatology department. Surely we should have all of those things in the traumatology department. Um, Hospitalisation required for the treatment is not available. Check free beds or try higher priority. You can't be treated. Um, is it because we haven't got spare beds? Is that the problem? Do we need more beds over here or something like that? Um, hang on. Concentrated oxygen. So it says required room, office, diagnostic unit, burn unit. Ah, hang on. That's the burn unit. Maybe we need another bed in the burn unit. Maybe that's the problem. Okay, right. We can do that. We've got some money. Look, it's great. Here we go. Hang on a second. Let's go to the right thing. Um, yeah, and press the right button. It'd be helpful. Right. So let's get let's rotate that around a little bit so we're looking at these and then we'll rotate them around and put i mean can we afford two more beds can we afford two more i think we'll be fine won't we so if we just go like that just grab all of that rotate that round and then put it immediately there 
and then go to walls and get rid of that bit of wall there that's clearly not supposed to be there. There we go. I'm okay with that. So we've got two more beds. They've got the little kind of dividing bit in the middle. Maybe we do need, hang on, hang on. Maybe we do need a dividey bit like that, just to, you know, give these people their privacy as well. There we go. That'll do. So hopefully that means that that person can come in here. Hang on. So are you now going to go and get treated? Can't be treated. Um, we can't hang out. Burn unit hospitalization. There you go. You're going to bed. Okay. Good night. <laughs> That was the problem before then. We didn't have a lack of beds. See, why doesn't it say there is a lack of beds? Uh, like that, look. No free bed, HDU hospitalization. I get that. Don't say there's no concentrated oxygen. I, I don't know what that means. Dr. Penn doesn't even know the difference between a leg and a foot. Don't talk to me about concentrated oxygen. <laughs> got no idea. Um, okay, okay, right. So you need HDU. Oh, hang on. You need to go over here then. So now we need some more beds over here. Crikey, is okay, okay, this is fine. It's all fine. It's all it's all good. We've got we've got not that much money, but it's okay. We'll spend some of it on some lovely beds. Right, so grab that, rotate that round, we'll put that there. That's five and a half grand. That there. We unfortunately can't get another bed in just there, which is a bit of a bother, but not to worry. Um so we'll put one there and one there. We shall spend a great big sum of money on making sure that we have enough beds over here. And hopefully that problem will not happen again. <laughs> Deary me. Right. Okay. Just sort that bit of wall out. So that's four more beds. So hopefully you, as soon as we unpause time, you should then go to bed. Yeah. Hospitalized, transported to room, a pulmonary laceration. Okay. So you've been shot by an arrow or stabbed or something. You've been got by a pointy thing and it really hurts quite a bit. Okay. Um, right. Is everything okay now? Is everything calm? What time are we on? Quarter past seven. We've treated 73 people. We need to treat 90 people to complete that goal. Can we get that done before the end of the day? Also, can people give us a massive pile of money before the end of the day? Because in half an hour's time, we've got to pay the wages of the day staff. And um, yeah, they they do actually require quite a lot of money. So um, yeah, this could be quite bad. When it gets to eight o'clock in not many minutes time, Lisa Allen, you have to clear off. Sorry, we're too busy. It's too complicated. We're going to go down. We're on minus 15,000 of the monies, which isn't great. Okay, so day staff all clear off. Night shift come in. Um, Joseph King is waiting for a thing. Yeah, okay, bye, Joseph King. <laughs> Whatever. See you later. Bye-bye. Um, regular hospitalization. There's no free bed for regular hospitalization. Um, that is trauma. So where's regular hospitalization? Um, hang on. Whereabouts is that? What have you got? Frostbite on your legs. Um, I mean, do you not go in here? Are you not going to come into here? I'm not. What? What's regular hospitalization? Do you, is it, that's not, no, you need to go over here then. Isn't that regular hospitalization over here? So are all those beds full? Are they full? Hang on a minute. No, I'm, I don't understand. What does regular hospitalization mean? <laughs> Again, game, bit be more clear. Tell me what room the man needs to go into and I will add beds to that room. I do not know what you mean by regular hospitalization. Burn unit hospitalization, yeah, all right, go into there. Um, patient needs to be hospitalised before treatment. I, I just tried to hospitalise them. Someone's collapsing. David Davis is collapsing. Oh, hang on. Where is David Davis? David Davis has collapsed. Um, oh, he's in bed. He's in bed and he's being seen to. Yeah, okay, right, fine. Somebody's already treating him. Okay, this is good news. Unless he dies, in which case that's bad news particularly for him. Robert Hernandez is clear enough. Bye-bye, Robert. See you later. Um, yeah, you've got frostbite, but you are in here, which is good. You need regular hospitalization. <laughs> what does this mean? A regular ward. Hospitalize a patient at a regular ward. Okay, hang on. That must be a thing that we can build. Is it in general surgery? Because a few people in the comments have said, you're supposed to have a general surgery department by now. A regular ward. 
there's a regular ward. So I don't think any of our things so far have got regular wards. No. Okay. So you've got... Oh, no, there's a regular ward. That's a regular ward. Over here. Over wherever it is. Over here. Okay. So that can cope with more people. This room is still a massive mess. We'll never sort it out. <laughs> Beds are all over the place. Um, okay. So that is another regular ward. So anybody can go on there. So hang on. Hang on. Oh, we haven't got any money. Can we grab... Can we grab that and just pop that there without the window and the wall? I don't want the window and the wall. Not enough funds. Ah, okay. Do you know what? It's fine. It's fine. We'll we'll get some funds in a bit and then we'll work everything out. It's going to be okay. We're 12 and a half grand down and everyone's impatient and waiting for things. But it, it, I'm sure it's all fine. I just keep pressing that button and hoping that everyone just goes away. So in my position right now as hospital administrator... I'm kind of just, yeah, people are banging on my door saying, I haven't been seen for a long time. I'm very tired of waiting. And I'm doing the equivalent of, you know, sort of putting my fingers in my ears and going, la, 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 I can't hear you. I'm probably hiding under my desk right now or something. So, yep, yeah, I'm just going to get pressing that button and hoping that everyone just goes away. Ah, uh, yes, right. Okay, so our night staff are not doing any surgeries right now. But yeah, a few people in the comments did say that we haven't got the right people on board. So let's go and have a little look at that. And let's see if we can actually work that out, because that would be really helpful. If we could do surgeries at night time and during the day, that would get through the numbers very quickly. So in the daytime, what do we need? Three doctors. And we have three doctors on the night shift in orthopedics. So that's okay. So we have we need one and we've got three. So that's pretty good. Surgeons, we've got two on the day shift and we need one. We need none on the night shift, and we have one. And then in the, what is that? So anesthesiologists, on the day shift, we need one, we've got two. On the night shift, we need zero, and we have two. Nurses, uh, we need three on the day shift, and we've got five. On the night shift, we need one, and we have three. Surgery nurses, we need zero, and we've got one. And a USG tech, we haven't got any of those. I mean, I think we do have the right amount of people. I'm fairly certain we do have the right amount of people. It's all green and ticks and things, isn't it? Unless we need... Yes, we've got three doctors, three doctors, one surgeon, one surgeon, one... Well, we need one anesthesiologist, we've got two. We need three nurses, we've got three. And we've got... Yeah, we need... Ah, no, hang on. Two surgery nurses. We need two... We've only got one. Ah, there is our problem. We need some surgery nurses. Okay, we can do that right now. Medical surgery, 42% and 43%, although you are an alcoholic. I don't think you should be handling sharp tools. Um, okay, let's spend a... Oh, no. <laughs> I can't spend any money to reveal there. Can we spend it? I oh, know we can. It let us do that. Okay, so you are a hedonist, but you're a loyal hedonist. Um, you live far away. All these people are pretty rubbish. I don't want anybody who's hungover. So we're going to have to spend two and a half grand if we can. Yes, we can somehow magically spend money, even though we don't have any. Um, and then we need to reveal the perks. Please be good. Oh, th what is going on? What is this pool of terrible people we've been given? Um, Peter Martin, medical surgery, 39%. Although you will often be late for work. Okay. These are the ones that are terrible. 11%, 6 and 11% is rubbish. So we're not having that. So I think, last roll of the dice, we have to do this again. And just hope that we get some good people. Right. 43, 37, 32. Okay, this is good. And then we just want to reveal the hidden perks. <sighs> what? Why... Are all the, all the people that are good at medical surgery also alcoholics? What have you seen? Um, okay, you have dirty feet, but resistance. I can take dirty feet. That's absolutely fine. And you are better at work in the day, but you live far away. You're depressed and slow. The game is giving us some really fairly naff candidates. They've like got a good thing and then a bad thing. Okay, Lisa Lewis, you can come in, even though you have very dirty shoes. 
Just clean your shoes. <laughs> That's a trait that could go away. Um, we'll get Lisa Lewis, because also, yeah, she is a medical surgeon. So you come in. So does that mean that we can now do nighttime surgery? Because we've got four nurses on the night shift. Two of them are surgery nurses. The other two should be able to keep things ticking over. So um, hang on. We need to rename Lisa Lewis first. Very important. So crikey, another spin on the wheel of names already. Right. Okay, here we go. Spinity spin. And we welcome John Cursor to the orthopedics night shift. There you go, John Cursor. Welcome aboard. Right. Now let's see if you actually do now spring into action. Can we do some nighttime surgeries now that we have the required skills to do so? I think now we have got the right amount of people. So can we please start moving people in their dusty river? Do you know what you can do? Go and do some general... We haven't got enough money. Botherations. Okay. <laughs> dusty river is just going to actually go to work, which is fine. That's a good thing. Um, we're on 80 people and we need to treat 90. I'm just going to press the button for that and hope it goes away. And it looks like we are not doing any treatments at night time. We're not doing any surgery, even though I'm fairly certain. Oh, no, we are. We are. Uh, also, it's gone to midnight and the game did have a little bit of a wobble there. Um, publicity earned thanks to a famous influencer treated in your hospital attracts 45% more patients. Oh, no, there's going to be 45% more pop-ups saying these people have waited a long time. However, we are now doing nighttime surgeries. Okay, this could be huge. This could be really huge. Getting this done at night time is going to be really, really helpful because that's going to lessen the queues in the daytime. We can get some people out of here because look, this is rammed. This is absolutely packed. So if we can do even just three or four people in the night, that's going to be really good. Oh, Pip. Pip has leveled up. Well done. Pip can either go down the route of anesthetics or we can change it to orthopedic surgery. Okay, do you know what? Have, yeah, become an orthopedic surgeon. Why not? That seems like quite a good thing to have. So there you go. You can do some surgery as well. And Chappie has been treated for his mandibular fracture. Oh no, Dana Brown has collapsed. Oh, Dana Brown. Hang on a minute. Where are you? You're in that bed. Okay, burn unit hospitalization. There's not enough in there either. Um, Yeah, if we get that. Yeah, okay, that's fine. We're concentrating on Dana Brown right now, making sure that she's okay. All these other people whinging about needing a bed or whatever. Is Dana Brown... Oh, that's Dana Cole. Where's Dana Brown? Uh, that's Kate Lopez. Rachel Davis. Oh. Oh, Dana Brown must have been taken to uh, intensive care. Is Dana Brown over here in intensive care? There we go. Right. She's okay. She's okay. Jessica Garcia has had a bit of a collapse. Um, over here, she's got an abdominal ballistic wound. But again, we don't have the night shift over here set up quite yet. We'll have to do that in a bit. Right. So she's gone down to here. We're now... $30,500 in debt. We do get quite a bit of money fairly early on in the morning when lots of people you know, spend money because they've been here overnight. So I think we should get quite a bit of money. Jennifer Taylor is collapsing. Ah, <laughs> oh, dearie me. Where is Jennifer Taylor? A chemical burn of the arm. Um. Okay, where? Hang on. Whereabouts are you? You are where? Uh, oh, Oh, you're on the floor behind that. Ah, right. Okay, that would help if I could see you. But right, there you go. So you've now sort of collapsed a bit. We're on minus 19 and a half grand. Uh, there's no free bed and intensive care. Oh, dear. Um, Yeah, we've got just, we've got too many people. There's too many people requiring too few sort of areas of the hospital. And we haven't got the money required to build other bits of the hospital. We haven't finished this department off properly yet. We want to get... A sort of a bathroom type thing set up over there and get some lovely uh, sort of yeah break room set up for the staff over there but we can't do it I want to make that break room bigger as well that was on my tiny list of scribbled things that i wanted to get done this time around but instead we've just been kind of fighting fires and buying beds and sorting out night shifts and things um okay we can't afford to build an intensive care bed we just can't do that so we're gonna have to send you somewhere else i'm afraid Go to another hospital. Yes. Don't, don't, please don't die in our hospital. <laughs> that would be bad. Um, but we can't afford to build another bed. So I think we need to try to get through day 31 as best we can and see what money we have at the end of it. How much wage do we pay? Um, yep. Yeah, okay. Thanks. At the end of it. Oh my goodness me. <laughs> Brooke's got 
D- away, away with you, Brooke Scott. Go somewhere else. Frank the Tea Tank is now a specialist. That's really good. Um, okay, you don't get to pick a specialization because you've already got one. Okay, well done, Frank the Tea Tank. <laughs> good job. Well done. Um, okay, hang on. Yeah, so can we see the wages that we have to pay? So today, so day 30, um, we must pay a bit more than that. We pay more than 10 grand, don't we? We lose 20, ah, inch, ah, right, okay, I see, right, hang on a second, hang on. So, building was 44 grand, so we only lose, what, we only lose, about, we lose more than that on wages, don't we? We lose way more than that on wages, or is it per department? Is it showing us per department? Um, no, no, that's per department. I know wages are here. Wages are here. So 21, yeah, 21 grand in wages. Oh dear. Um, ben V has leveled up. Well done, Ben V. You're a trauma surgeon as well. This is all good news. Right, so our surgeons are getting better, which is encouraging. Nancy Green has collapsed due to a ballistic wound on her arm. Okay. <laughs> then we have a bed. There's a bed available, which is nice. Makes a change. Um... Th- there isn't a bed available. Oh, right, Nancy Green, away with you. Send you away because we can't do anything about it because we haven't got any money to buy any beds, particularly not the intensive care beds because they're really expensive. So, um, okay, this is all this is all going not entirely according to plan. It's all a little bit all over the place, but at least we are slowly but surely working our way through people in here. Look, two operating lounges working very quickly indeed. Now the this one here can go through the night for orthopedics patients as well. So hopefully that can get the numbers down in here. Although there are an awful lot of people. <laughs> You've leveled up though. This is very good. People leveling up is wonderful. We like that. That means they do their job better and quicker and all that kind of stuff. So there we go. That's a positive. Who's being operated on in there? You for hip osteoarthritis. Okay, so that's another orthopedics person. Jennifer Martinez is collapsing. Away with you. Go to another hospital because we've got nowhere to put you. I'm very sorry. <laughs> Why are there so many collapsy people? Oh, no, maybe we've got some beds. We might have beds. Oh, this is the problem, of course. We've got 45% more patients coming in. <laughs> At least we might treat 90 patients per day, possibly. We might possibly get that goal done. That'd be quite nice, wouldn't it? This is very silly. <laughs> 69 patients already at what? At uh, half three. So we need 2019. 20... Jessica Garcia is collapsing. <laughs> it's all fine. Everything's fine. It's all under control. Nothing to see here. Move along. Okay, I'd like to go and have a word with the famous influencer who attracted 45% more people to our hospital because it's caused us no end of trouble. I've been trying to have a relaxing time just watching what's going on in the hospital, making sure that everything is ticking over quite nicely. I came over to the gift shop because I thought that would be a little bit of respite from the constant barrage of messages like this one. But no, all these messages just keep coming up all the time. There's no beds, people are tired of waiting, all that kind of stuff. I know, I know it's fine. Right, this, oh no, somebody else has collapsed. I think she's already in a bed. She is not well. Oh dear, can we possibly code blue that person? Can we get them treated really, really soon? Because I fear they might not make it. Because they've already collapsed once, I think. So that's their second kind of relapse. Which is not very good at all. Um, Okay, I'm just... Can we get one more person? One more person treated. And we will complete that goal. Okay, there we go. We're treating 90 patients per day. The next goal, treat 100 patients per day. But if we do that, we get given 100,000 monies. Joseph Allen is leaving. He's not going to contribute toward that total, but a hundred grand would be super helpful about now because we need some money to build all sorts of things like, you know, beds and wards and everything else. My goodness me. So if we could get another, what, eight, no, nine people treated by the end of the day, that would be wonderful. And we've got a queue of people over here in the x-ray thing, 95. Richard Martin might not possibly be feeling so well. He's sort of collapsed a bit, but okay, I'm sure they'll sort that out. Um, Come on, come on. We need to get five more people treated and then we can buy a bed for Richard Martin. He can have a little lie down at 96. Come on, 98, 99. Are we going to get to 100 people treated before the end of the day? I think so. Richard Martin is requiring a bed in ICU hospitalization. Wait there, Richard Martin. <sighs> right. 
100 grand, pause time, we need another bed over here. And unfortunately, yes, we're going to have to spend a big chunk of money on getting this in because these beds are not cheap, which is a bit sad, but there we go. Um, right, so grab another one of these. Oh, dearie me. Okay, so grab that like that. Pop that there. That is another ten and a half grand. Just gone. Just gone in, in the back, blink of an eyelid. Just in no time at all, that money has gone. But we now do have 100 and 13,000 of the monies, which is wonderful. Now, we've sorted out the night shift. Hang on, who's being operated on there? Um, you're being operated on, right. So that's orthopedics. We've sorted out the night shift for orthopedics so they can do operations. Do we sort out the night shift for traumatology? Because there are quite a few people in here that do need treatment. And as we've seen, they do keep collapsing. I think the people in orthopedics are just a bit unwell. They just got a bit of a hurty leg, a broken arm, really horrible, but they're not at risk of you know, slipping into unconsciousness or whatever. Whereas over here, with their gunshot wounds and burns and all that kind of stuff, they're more at risk of being a bit dead. So I think possibly we look at getting a proper night shift in over here, so a surgery night shift, so more surgeries can happen. I think that could be really handy. Okay, well, hang on. Uh, let's go to the right department. So let's get this all sorted. So hang on. What do we need exactly? Um, yeah, so traumatology. We've got, we've got what's going on. What's going on over here? So we've got, where are we? Over here. There we go. Um, so we need three doctors in the day. We've only got two at night time. So we need another nighttime doctor. We've got a surgeon at night time. We need one of those. And we need one anesthesiologist. And we have two of those on the night shift. Okay, so let's get another surgeon, possibly. That might be quite good. So can we get another surgeon, please? Trauma surgery, 36%. You're a good boss. That's very encouraging. You're a germaphobe. You wash your hands three times to be sure. That's probably not a bad thing to be honest, if you're going to go and do surgery. So let's get Susan King in. So now we've got three doctors as required in the day. We've got one surgeon, we've got two surgeons. We need one anesthesiologist. We have two of those nurses. Okay, so hang on. Surgery nurses. We need two surgery nurses. So I think that's when we've got cardio tech. That's all we need. We need two surgery nurses. In fact, no, we've got one already. We need one more surgery nurse on the night shift, and I think that'll do. But let's get another nurse as well. So hang on, let's get a um, let's get a medical surgery nurse in. Um, Linda Green, you will do the job just fine. Um, do we spend a bit of money on revealing your secret? In fact, you know what? Susan Walker and Linda Green, they could both come in. Hang on, let's reveal your things. Oh, Linda Green. <laughs> we had high hopes for you, Linda. Okay, maybe not you. Rachel Allen and Susan Walker. Susan Walker likes a bit of food, that's fine. So Susan Walker and you come. Um, Karen Cole's got dirty feet, so hang on a minute. Sort it out by that. Kate Foster, 33% medical surgery, but two hidden things. And uh, Rachel Allen, you can come in because you're a people person and that's nice. So now I think we've got plenty of nurses. So we need three nurses and we've got four on the night shift and you need two surgery nurses and we've got three. So I think they should be able to do surgery stuff as well at night time, which would be wonderful. Um, but okay, there we go. Right now, what we need to do is go over to the Wheel of Names and spin another, what, three names? So yeah, what have we got? Susan King, and then we've got Susan Walker, and then Rachel Allen. Okay, yeah, so three more names coming up. Okay, so courtesy of the Wheel of Names, we can now welcome April, who is our nighttime trauma surgeon, and we can welcome both Thomas P and Sky Knight, who are the nighttime medical surgery nurses, which is wonderful stuff. So welcome aboard April and Thomas P and Sky Knight, and also their status says preparing for surgery. So I think, again, now we have the right amount of people here on the night shift, they can do surgeries during the night, which is wonderful because, you know, that'll clear up more beds because more people are being operated on nighttime. And that might maybe just make things a little bit more organised around the place because, yeah, it's a little bit chaotic at the moment. So hopefully that can help out quite a bit. So here we go. Let's see them do some surgery. They've got to go over here, I imagine, but that's OK. So let's have a little look. Are they coming in? 
It said they were preparing for surgery. There we go, look. So the two nurses are in. It's got to eight o'clock, okie doke. Um, and now they come down here. They're doing some surgery. The doctors are in. Okay, a thing has happened. Hi, Frank, how are you? Um, right, so who is this in here then? So yeah, this is Andy Adlin, who is having a small bowel resect. Oh no, hang on. No, you're one of the, I was going to say, you're one of the people. You have just leveled up though, which is very exciting. You're one of our team. I was thinking, hang on a minute. No, Jessica Garcia. Oh, ah, yes. You're one of the intensive care people. You're going to pay us 7,100 money. That's a ridiculous amount of money. Um, because yes, you have an abdominal ballistic wound. I mean, the little picture there is a cannon. I don't imagine you've been shot by a cannon, but okay. Uh, again, these messages just popping up. We're just going, yep, yeah, okay, absolutely. Yes, I completely agree. I'm reading every word, but okay. So I think she's being taken over here. Look, hang on. Let's maybe keep an eye on her. Rachel Hill's going away. Okay, bye, Rachel Hill. So we'll watch Jessica Garcia just to make sure that she is okay. Um, Matthias Bustamante has leveled up, which is wonderful. Um, more complaints about beds or whatever. Yep, 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 yep. Might have to turn those off because these messages are getting very, very irritating. Yep, whatever. I, 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 give me the relevant ones. So she's back over here. I think she's been stabilized in terms of intensive care. I think we still need to treat her for her abdominal ballistic wound. Um, Jordan Wilson is collapsing. Every, every, again, everything is all fine. It's all okay. Everything is good. You're going to clear off for a bit. I mean, yeah, a lot of this is because of the 45% more patients. Although we do need another bed in intensive care now. <laughs> Botherations. Okay. Okay. Where can we put it? We'll put it along that wall there. Everything is fine. Everything is okay. Um, okay. Let's go to here and we shall grab ourselves another intensive care bed for another 10 grand, 10 and a half grand, isn't it? So again, that money we had kind of just, you know, vanishing away, but never mind, never mind. It's very important that we get this to look after our patients. Frank Harris is collapsing. <laughs> Don't tell me we need another bed in intensive care. Um, he's always oh, having heart failure. Okay, that's quite serious. I'd like to think that all the machines are beeping and booping very, very loudly about this point in time. Um, okay. Is it going to say, hey, there's not a bed for him to go into? It's gone to midnight. Okay, thankfully, patient numbers are back to normal, which is good. Because that might stop all this car chaos and carnage going on. Um, okay, so now there's no bed for him to go into. <laughs> oh, we had a load of money and we could have used it to build a whole brand new ward. But no, instead, it looks like we might have to go and get ourselves, like, you know, some more beds or whatever. Um, okay. We're going to have to do it because that guy is going to die otherwise, I imagine. So um, hang on a minute. Hang on. What can we do with these? There's something across the other side of the room there. We've got these things. Okay, can we put that under there? And can we put that, I don't know, there? Can we put that under that one? No. That does have something important looking on top of it. Do you know what? That can go there for now. And we'll try and fit the bed into that gap. Um, okay, fine. Grab that and we'll rotate it around. We'll put that there. Right, there we go. <laughs> Some more money just frittering away, but hopefully he can go into that bed. Charles Thomas is now collapsing. Charles Thomas, do not make me build another intensive care bed because we cannot do that. We can't just keep buying intensive care beds for every single person that has a little bit of a collapse. Um, okay, let's see if they can stabilize Charles Thomas. Um, yeah, you're going into septic shock, which does sound very unpleasant. And now it's saying you can't be treated. You know what? Send you away. It's fine. You can just go somewhere else, Charles Thomas. We can't look after you. We haven't got the beds. But um, yeah, have we done any nighttime surgery? I've been so distracted by, by all the stuff going on. I haven't seen if we've done any kind of nighttime, uh, whatever this department's called again. I've completely forgotten. Traumatology surgery. That's the one. Yep. Yeah, okay. That's a nice message. Have we done nighttime traumatology surgery because I'm hoping we have because I think we did just get the team together to do it that was kind of the point of why we did all that so hopefully we can see somebody else being treated at night time there are quite a few people over here I'm not quite sure why we're not doing any treatments at all during night time could we please go and do some treatments could we do some operations because that'd be really good 
No, you're not going to do it. Okie doke, never mind. I've just had a little look at the one and only insurance company objective that we have remaining, and that's down here for Protect Care that says successfully finished three accident events. And if we look over here, the events are currently locked away. They've all got big padlocks on them. But if you hover over it, it says user event button will unlock after completing second objective for Quick Snap Care Insurance Company. So that is the Quick Snap Care Insurance Company there. We haven't unlocked those yet, but if we do want to get them on board, we have to purchase five flashy lights Nino machines. Now, right now we have three of those, so we need another two, which would be quite expensive. And also, I think that will be bad for the hospital overall, because at the moment we can't really cope with the amount of people coming in via the flashy lights Nino machines. Everything's a little bit busy as we've seen, it's all over the place and everyone's running about and there's you know, stretchers and things flying about the hospital. So I think getting another two flashy lights Nino machines would be very bad indeed. That's going to swamp two already massively overworked departments. So I don't think we can do that right now. I don't think that would be a good idea. So we can't currently complete that objective there because we've not got this objective here sorted out. So right now, we've got no proper insurance company goals to aim for. So there's no free money coming in, which is a little bit of a shame. We have gone over 100 grand, which is quite nice. We're back over 100 grand on $108,000. So I think what we do is, I think we'll finish up for now, but next time, I think we'll try and possibly just get a little break room sorted here and maybe a bathroom sorted here. And that will complete this department. I think that'll be quite nice just to get that done properly. And then I think maybe we look at getting general surgery in, but general surgery can't fit on this floor. It's going to have to go up here somewhere. It's going to have to go on an entirely new floor of the hospital, which is very exciting. I mean, maybe we put it over here. Maybe it could fit over here. So we have to blueprint it and do the walls and all that kind of stuff. I imagine we don't have to put foundation down anymore because the foundation is already there. So now it's just building on top of what's already there. So that's quite good. So we don't have to pay for the floor anymore, for the actual you know, foundation flooring. So that'll save us a bit of money. So I think that's what we should do next time. Get general surgery, because lots of people in the comments have said, you need that, it's really helpful. So um, yeah, waiting room, general surgery office, all the normal stuff, on call room, regular ward. That's going to be really helpful. We can build a massive HDU, because we know they need to be big now. So we can have a huge one of those. I think we'll do this over time. I don't think we're going to be able to do this really quickly. I think we might be able to get a little bit in at a time, maybe get the clinic in and one of these rooms possibly. But we shall work on this, I think. I think we'll work on getting the general surgery department in. And then that will bring us... I have a bit of a plan here, though. That will bring us up to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight departments fully working. Then Overcure want nine fully working departments. So if we then go ahead and build an infectious diseases clinic, we get Happy Life on board. We complete the infectious diseases clinic with the hospitalization bit. That means we'll have nine fully working departments. So we can then have Happy Life on board. Then we can get Overcure on board. They pay us 170% for the payments, which is very good. So we can make some good money off that. And then eventually we could buy some ambulances and then complete the protect care thing down here. So it's a bit of a long way round of doing it, but I think that's what we might have to do. But um, yeah, plenty to be getting on with. But my goodness me, hopefully it can calm down a bit now. It's been a little bit manic and all over the place. And we haven't really kind of built that much stuff. Kind of changed that round and that's kind of very important. But in terms of expansion, we've not really done too much stuff. There is a bit of a gap over there. We need to fill that in so we can build on top of it. But um, yeah, so we'll finish up for now. We'll come back next time. And we'll just see what we get up to. Can we get a general surgery department all up and running? I'm not entirely sure we can, but we'll give it a very good go. And then, yeah, we're kind of running out of departments to build after that. I mean, yeah, cardiology could be quite good. I mean, Watt's got not much to build. They're all kind of the same thing now. There's a lot of the same thing. It's just like regular ward, high dependency, on-call room. So, yeah, we'll see what we can do next time. But we shall focus on general surgery and we'll see how we get on. Hopefully you are still enjoying this. If you are, please do leave a like. That would be most marvellous indeed. And also, if you're not already, then please do subscribe to keep up to date with how we get on here next time out in Project Hospital. But for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard and I will see you next time. Move out of the way, friend. I'm going to completely ignore you and do some comment moderating. Kung Fu Croquet.
Maria, you've broken my heart. There you go, some more flowers that I stored on the back of my pants, lovely, there we go. As you can see, I'm having the wildest of times. Enormous banana mask. <laughs>